combination guard. Play with the ball, shoot the three-pointer, play near the basket, has the heart to be a defender, has the size and also to be not only a guy that plays with the ball, but plays off the ball. Obviously, there are things for a young player to improve. Playing against two guards, he had to probably improve defensively. And more importantly, playing off the ball, as you mentioned, learning how to come off screens and things of that nature. I really like his game, and I think he's going to be a marketable young man in the NBA as well. Absolutely. Mayo was the third leading freshman scorer in the nation, but he shared some spotlight in Los Angeles with a guy at the rival school UCLA that means Kevin Love of course and at the final four Kevin Love did some things that you don't normally see out of, out of forget college players anybody this guy maybe the best chess passer we've seen out of college not that that's you know a skill everybody's looking at but that we've seen in many many years learn those uh, outlet pass skills from Wes Unseld whom his father played with with the bullets many years ago Andy Kevin Love what's the uh, what are the prospects for him right now where does it look like he's likely to land well, there are essentially four spots for Kevin Love. Now, he's basically number two in Minnesota, so he could potentially go uh, to them if for some reason uh, Mayo is off the board and they have a change of heart and Kevin McHale really wants Kevin Love at Minnesota at number three. If he doesn't go there on the back side, I'm going to skip over here for a second, in the back side of the lottery, Charlotte at number nine and New Jersey at number ten are those other two locales for Kevin Love. But a more likely scenario potentially could be for him at Memphis at number five. He is at the top of their list and what we're gonna have to watch on Thursday night is if he goes number five to Memphis then the Grizzlies are going to keep that pick and keep Kevin Love. I know Chris Wallace likes Kevin Love, likes what he can do for them, fundamentally sound and sort of help anchor their front line. Now if he's not at number five and he's on the board then you're gonna look for a potential trade for Memphis. Chris Wallace telling me they're trying to decide do they want to keep one of these picks. They've also got number 28, do they want to go young or do they want to get back a veteran? And a trade that certainly has legs right now that is being discussed is between Memphis and New York where Memphis would send that number five pick and some other considerations and get back from New York David Lee. Now with that five and six, New York would select Russell Westbrook at number five and Danilo Gallinari, Gallinari excuse me, at number six, giving them two picks in the lottery for the New York Knicks. So that's something that's being bandied about right now. Memphis also talking with Denver with pick number 28. So if Kevin Love is the pick at five, expect him to stay at Memphis. If he's not the pick at five and he doesn't go to Minnesota, look for Kevin Love to land in either Charlotte or New Jersey at nine or 10. Well, possibilities are endless. Chris, you had a chance to speak to Kevin Love. Where does he think he's going to wind up? Yeah, I talked with Kevin last night. He thinks he's going to go to Memphis at number five, and he's excited about that. And that makes him unique right there because a lot of players refused to work out for the Grizzlies. They didn't want to play there. Love did obviously work out for them, and, and they love him. He thinks it would be a great fit. You look at Mike Conley at point guard, Rudy Gay as a swing man. And Love told me last night he doesn't think a lot of his skills were showcased at UCLA. He likes to play in a spread offense. He would love to be in an up-tempo system like Mark Ivoroni talks about because as we've talked about his outlet passing yeah. skills, one GM told me he's the best outlet passer in the world for whatever that's worth, but he would fit in an up-tempo style. Well, I really like Kevin Love. I got a chance to work out for him. I get a little nervous when people give you a compliment and say you're a great outlet passer, but <laughs> whatever that's worth. Here's a guy getting 10 <laughs> rebounds. He's going to throw outlet passes. But ultimately, he's not going to be a guy that plays above the rim. He's not going to be a guy that overpowers other big men in the NBA. But what he can do is bring you a high post presence, a guy that can make a 17-foot shot, a guy that can stretch the defense, a guy that's going to do all the intangibles, play smart, play within himself. And he's really going to be helped if he has the opportunity to play alongside other big guys so he doesn't have to go against the other centers on other teams. If he's able to go against a power forward every night, I think he'll have an opportunity to make plays and still be a successful player. You, you know, the outlet passing, it's fascinating to people because <laughs> it's such an old-school kind of skill, and it really would make a lot of sense with a team that runs the ball Memphis would want to do to get it out to those guards, make a half-court pass, a three-quarter court pass, and get them out on the break. All right, back to Andy Katz in New York. And Andy, Danilo Gallinari is a guy whose name people have sort of become accustomed to as the draft approaches, but frankly, most fans have never seen him play, don't really know what he's about. He's about 6'9", maybe even 6'10", can shoot the lights out, and yet there's so many questions about where he might potentially wind up. Chad Ford has him back to number six with the Knicks. Where do you think he's going? Well, based on every source I've talked to, that is true 
if the Knicks can maybe pick up number five, the big question, and it may happen regardless, but the big question is whether or not New York, if they only have one first round selection, can go just with Gallinari. If you also take Russell Westbrook at five, if you make that trade with Memphis, then you sort of camouflage Gallinari and get another player in there, another American that might be a little bit more popular within the uh, garden on Thursday night. Now, if he doesn't go number six, the other option for him is number 10 in New Jersey. But there are some concerns with Gallinari, and I know for a fact that New Jersey is trying to look at that and questioning, is he the right fit for them? Do, does he make most sense for them at number 10? If he does slide past number 10, then he could drop out of the lottery and start to slide a little bit more. Now, he stayed in this draft because he was expecting to go in the top 10, possibly stay in this New York market. And if he goes out of the top 10, then we could have a similar situation of Fran Vasquez, if you remember from a couple of years ago, yep. who was selected in the lottery to Orlando and basically never came, and that was a lost draft pick for the Magic. Yeah, he's still playing over in Spain. The Magic are still working with him, trying to get him over to the United States. Gallinari? Matt, this makes me a little nervous. You've got an international player coming to the States that's going to play three and four, which means he's going to play have to guard guys like LeBron James or guys like Kevin Garnett. I don't know if he has the bulk or the tenacity to play in the paint. I don't know if he has the speed to play on the perimeter. Yes, he's going to be a guy that can knock down jump shots, but ultimately he only averages four rebounds, which means he's not going to be in there mixing it up. You haven't really seen this guy play. Ultimately, I think he possibly can contribute to a team, but I think taking him in the lottery, especially in the top six, you will hear a lot, you will hear a lot of boo birds in New York, I think, if he got picked at, at that high. Well, one of the teams that took one of his countrymen, Andrea Bargnani, an Italian, at number one a few years ago, they're looking to trade their picks out of this draft. Toronto with 17, Indiana with 11, Portland with 13. They're looking to move their picks. They're, the two of those teams, Toronto and Portland, don't need any more youngsters. And the feeling is even if you move down in the draft, between like 12 and 25 or so, you can probably get the same caliber of player. Now, Toronto with the 17th pick, they're shopping that along with TJ Ford and Rosho Nesterovich. The reports that came out yesterday that they were talking with Indiana about Jermaine O'Neal are legitimate. I've talked with an executive who's close to that situation this morning. He said there's really a 50-50 chance that that trade could happen. Toronto thinks that Jermaine O'Neal would be a perfect fit there. The only thing holding it up is their concerns about his health. If they're convinced that he's back from that knee injury, this trade could very well go down. And it signifies a change for the Raptors. They've been more of an open court, spread offense type team. If they bring O'Neal in, they'll play him at the five, Bosch at the four, and Andrea Bargnani will back them up at the four and five and maybe even play some three. And they'll obviously go with a bigger, more half court oriented style, which Sam Mitchell as the coach would like. And, and it'd be a change there, but it'd be a good one. It would be an interesting change. And, and he carries a big number with him salary wise for a guy who's missed a lot of time the last couple of years. Our thanks to Andy Katz in New York, and we'll hear more from Andy as the uh, draft approaches Thursday night on ESPN. Coming up here, sometimes bigger is better, sometimes, you know, it's just bigger. Sometimes smaller has the bigger impact. With the Bulls facing the decision of point guard or power forward, we'll dig into the philosophical arguments for big versus small. One of the biggest movers of this pre-draft season moves onto our court coming up. Projected lottery pick Joe Alexander of West Virginia is here today. We'll talk to him, plus more of our all-access visit with Michael Beasley. Why are you ever going to Minnesota so bad? Are you in Minnesota right now? How cold? How cold are you? Sports Center, brought to you by Mike's Hard Lemonade. In a world gone soft, someone's got to be hard. should come up with a new Mike's Hard Lemonade. Yeah, something for fat guys. Presenting Mike's Hard Light Lemonade. If you're gonna eat five dollars, shouldn't you get more meat? 
Quiznos Large Deli Favorite Sandwiches are just $5. Try the new Large Five Meat Stack. Five meats, five dollars. Mmm, Quiznos. Success doesn't happen overnight. It starts with a vision. It takes planning, confidence, and performance. Little chip shot on the green. He's got it. He's got it. But above all, it takes the power of commitment. Transamerica, the power of the pyramid. The fates of a couple franchises, at least, rest on the Bulls' decision at number one Thursday night. Whoever they pick, both the Bulls and the Heat, presumably, will feel the impact of the decision for years to come. And with two very talented but very different players, the decision is in part defined by need, big or small. There's some teams that went big. In 99, the Bulls took Elton Brand. Brand won Rookie of the Year, but then was traded to the Clippers. Steve Francis was the number two pick that season. In 1994, the Bucks went with the big dog, Glenn Robinson. Robinson averaged more than 20 a game over his career, but the number two pick wasn't half bad. Jason Kidd, a future Hall of Famer, who shared Rookie of the Year honors with Grant Hill. 1991, Larry Johnson was the big, though not as big as he played. The number two pick that year was Kenny Anderson, picked by the Nets, where he played four and a half seasons. And in 1990, the Nets selected Derek Coleman, often compared to Michael Beasley, went on to win the Rookie of the Year award, but the Sonics took Gary Payton number two, not a half bad player himself. But guys, you go back through time and it's been 1998 it was the last time an NBA team won a championship without an all-star forward. Go back to 04 to find the last team to win one without an all-star guard. You need, you know, good guys on, on both parts, big or small. I'm taking big, no question about it. At the end of the day, when you have a good big man, he controls the paint. It's a reason why it's three seconds in the paint, because offensively, you're shooting close to the basket, you're shooting high percentage. Defensively, you can reject shots, you can rebound the ball and impact the game on both ends of the floor. If you look at the history of the game, or even since not the early 90s, all of the teams that won titles, you look at the Bulls, yes, they have six, but they have Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. You have players like Akeem Olajuwon won a couple of titles. You have Tim Duncan with four titles. You have Shaquille O'Neal with four titles. And this year, obviously, Boston with KG. If I'm taking between the two, I have to go big. But in this case, I see Beasley as more of a power forward than a center. So that's why I think the Bulls should take roles for other reasons. But comparing the two, got to go with the big fella. Yeah, I think you hit it on the head. I mean, the fact is most people don't think of Michael Beasley as that true big. If he was a legit 6'10", who you could pound it into the post night in, night out, then I don't think there'd be a question who the Bulls would go with, who the Heat would want. But Michael Beasley is really a 3'4", and at 6'8", he's not a huge guy like a Carlos Boozer or an Elton Brand who's going to be down there banging. And that's why you see more people looking at, at Derrick Rose in this case. Well, we want to know your thoughts as well, and we're, we're less interested in your philosophy than just which guy you want to go with. Our poll question is, who should the Bulls take with the number one pick in the NBA draft, Beasley or Rose? This has been an ongoing question for us, and we'll tell you what you're saying later on in this 90-minute SportsCenter special. It was very close when we checked the voting yesterday. Jay Villas has excellent size for an analyst, and as you know, you can't teach that. He also has great insight in all these players. Jay, you do a great job of evaluating these guys. And I'm curious, philosophically for you, if you have two players of roughly equal potential, and I'm not putting words in your mouth here, but would you go for the big guy or the guard? You know, it's funny, Matt. I don't really look at it that way. I don't look at it as a question of, of big versus small. I look at it as great versus not as great. And if you've got a true center, I agree with Jalen, if you've got a true center prospect that has a chance to be great, I think you take him because controlling the paint is controlling the game. But if you've got a, a great point guard prospect, you have to take a, a hard look at that as well. And I think you could look back to the 2000. Uh, five draft when Marvin Williams went number two to Atlanta and you had still available Darren Williams. Derrick Rose this year, who I think is a prototype point guard, just doesn't come around very often. Uh, I think you have to pull the trigger on Rose, irrespective of, of whether there's a big guy out there, unless you think that big guy is a Greg Oden type that uh, is going to anchor the middle and be a great big man, not just a good one. I remember in that 05 draft, uh, the Bucks went with Andrew Bogut, another big at number one. All right, big picture now. What would you say the strengths of this draft class are? 
Well, it's very deep with talent. I, I think the talent is young, though. That's the problem, is that outside of Derrick Rose and Michael Beasley, you've got a bunch of players that have some question marks. I, I'd throw O.J. Mayo in there as well. I don't have nearly as many question marks about uh, O.J. Mayo as some others do, but uh, I, I tend to think that everybody after that uh, is going to have some, some questions and concerns that are going to have to be satisfied before you're willing to pull the trigger on them. And we've got a bunch of players that have a lot of potential to be very good. Uh, but you just don't know. And some guys are going to have to wait on because their bodies aren't there, their games aren't there. Uh, so th that's really the issue here. We, we had, Matt, the best year we've had in the last 25 or so with regard to freshmen in college basketball. And they're all in this draft this year. And so we've got a ton of talent in this draft. It's just a question of sifting through that talent and finding where the real gems are and some of the guys you, you should pick further down. And I'll say this one last thing. I would love to see the NFL draft if all those guys had to pick freshmen like the NBA guys yep. do. You know, the, N the NBA executives that we beat up on an annual basis do a pretty darn good job of dealing with a bunch of players with a lot of question marks and it's an awfully hard job that they've got especially this year and obviously it's an inexact science with guys this young and every year teams miss on players who turn out to be great there are plenty of examples out there of late first rounders even second rounders who become stars in fact you don't have to look any further than the olympic team now tayshawn prince and carlos boozer uh 23rd and 35 respectively this year's draft who in your mind right now is being underrated most drastically well, I think there's a player out of Cal named Ryan Anderson, who's 6'10", he averaged over 21 points per game, just under 10 rebounds, who is being projected by some as a second-round pick, and frankly, I just don't get it. I, I think that Ryan Anderson is a first-round pick, and he's a guy that I think should go in the 20s and will be a terrific player uh, in the NBA over time. He needs to get a little bit stronger. He's not a great athlete, but he's very, very skilled, and he can shoot it deep to three-point range. And I think Courtney Lee of Western Kentucky is still a little bit undervalued. Uh, he should go, uh, I think, in the low 20s. 20s and uh, I had I had seen people projecting him as a second round pick earlier uh, I think he's a heck of a basketball player and uh, and I think he will be very very solid not only as a defender but can come in and hit mid-range shots he can handle the ball and I think he'll be a very good strong guard uh, throughout his career you referenced all the great freshmen out there available in this draft this is the third year of the draft that players were required to wait at least a year out of high school to be eligible three years in now how has the rule changed the evaluation process I think it's just made it easier on NBA personnel. You're not having to guess as much. It's still difficult because dealing with a guy uh, one year out of high school rather than straight out of high school is still problematic. Uh, and you mentioned it, Matt, and you're exactly right. Uh, mistakes are always made in this. It's an inexact science. But when you move the process up and you're dealing with teenagers, uh, you're going to have more mistakes made. So the longer they have to evaluate players and the longer the players have to establish who they are, uh, the more exactitude there's going to be. Uh, but there's, there are always going going to be problems in dealing with guys when you're trying to gauge potential. Will this guy's body, you mentioned Tayshaun Prince before, now he was a senior, but there were still questions. Can his body take it? You know, the guy was a bag of bones, but obviously he's proven that he can play. And you've got some other guys in this draft, whether it's Anthony Randolph of LSU. When's his body going to get there? JaVale McGee of Nevada, can he move his feet well enough? When is his body going to get there? Uh, you know, so there are a lot of issues uh, having to do with these players, but having an extra year certainly helps the NBA in their evaluation process. Process. It gives you a more mature player. And it also gives you a more marketable player that people are more familiar with, where years ago we didn't know who half these guys were as the, if you're the average fan. Prince, by the way, still a bag of bones and uh, still a great player, <laughs> as it turns out. Jay Billis, uh, thanks so much for your insight. We'll see you on our draft coverage on ESPN Thursday night, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. And much more on the way here on our Sports Center draft special. Last year, the Sonics draft decision was pretty easy. Wait for the Blazers to pick Greg Oden or Kevin Durant, then take the other guy. It's more complicated this time. We'll evaluate. Plus, Shaq wraps. You'll hear it. Two and a half miles. Half a mile southwest. Come on, man. Quarter mile. West! West! One street over, two buildings down on the right. Miller Lite, the ultimate light beer. Thursday night.
find the answer. The first pick in the NBA draft, Allen Iverson, Shaquille O'Neal, Tim Duncan. To realize a dream, to change a franchise, to go from the present to the future. Find out who will take the stage and become the face of the next generation. The 2008 NBA Draft, presented by Sprite. Coverage begins Thursday at 7 on ESPN. I need 480 tons of plaster. I need 70 more rolls of paper. I need an ultrasound machine. Now, the card that helps you get what you need can help you get what you want. When you're approved for the American Express Business Gold Rewards Card, you can earn a free domestic round-trip airline ticket on Delta or our other partners. So you can take that well-deserved trip anywhere in the U.S. And with no preset spending limit, you can use the card to buy what you need when you need it. Not next week. Not tomorrow. Now. Plus, you can get the rewards in return. Apply today, and we'll waive the fee for the first year. Call 1-800-NOW-OPEN or visit open.com slash free ticket. I need a better way to buy what I need. The American Express Business Gold Rewards Card. Apply today, and you can earn a free domestic round-trip airline ticket. Great interleague matchup tomorrow night on ESPN2 as the Diamondbacks play at Fenway for the second time in their club history. They're 4-0 so far after a great performance last night by Dan Heron. You'll see the D-backs and Sox tomorrow night, ESPN2, 7 o'clock Eastern time. What well, has not been a great year for the Seattle Sonics? Not only did the team suffer through a franchise record 62 losses last season, but there's questions about their future. The light at the end of the tunnel, of course, is Kevin Durant, the NBA Rookie of the Year. The question is where that tunnel will lead. The franchise is in litigation with the city over team owner Clay Bennett's plan to move the Sonics to Oklahoma City. And at this point in time, we don't know where they're playing next year. We do know this. They've got a lot of picks. Six, in fact. Two in the first round, four in the second round. Sonics got their other first-round pick in this draft from the Suns as part of the Kurt Thomas trade. Since the draft was reduced to two rounds in 1989, only the Bulls in 2000 had as many as six players picked. And frankly, that did not go very well. Of those six, only Chris Mim and Jake Voskel even remain in the league. So that was kind of a disaster. They've got the number four pick uh, in this draft. Who would look good in green and gold? Okay, what happens with Seattle obviously is a domino effect from what happens with the Timberwolves. I think if you look at the Timberwolves picks the last few years, you got Randy Foy, who's a perimeter player, point guard. You have McCance, who's basically a shooting guard. And you have Corey Brewer, as a small four. With Al Jefferson, I think they're going to go big and take Lopez. So that falls to Seattle to take O.J. Mayo. You pair him with Jeff Green and Kevin Durant, I really think you got some. You got some three young guys that can surround your perimeter, really make plays, all combination players, and they'll be very exciting if you got those guys together. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. I, I'm being told that uh, Seattle, if they keep the fourth pick, they'll take Brooke Lopez, the big seven-footer out of Stanford. They like him with Kevin Durant and Jeff Green and those guys. But they may not keep this pick. They've had talks with Miami where they would send the fourth pick and Chris Wilcox to the Heat for the number two pick, which obviously would be Michael Beasley. So it'd be interesting to see if that comes out. Beasley, Jeff Green, Kevin Durant. That's a nice threesome there in uh, Seattle or Oklahoma City. Or uh, wherever it's going to be, that would give them some hope because it was a miserable season. And really, the misery continues with that court case ongoing in Seattle. They had the worst scoring margin in the entire NBA last season. They are homegrown, if nothing else. Eight players on that Sonics roster were drafted by Seattle. That is the most in the NBA. Well, while NBA executives are testing the battery life of their cells, talking deals and losing sleep watching film, Kobe Bryant has promised not to try to do in his boss's job this summer. And while Bryant rests from a playoff run that took his team to the finals, Shaquille O'Neal has jumped on stage to remind everyone Kobe hasn't won a title without the big MC, now seen on the internet rapping shots at his former Laker teammate. Check it. You know how I be. Last week, Kobe couldn't do without me. You know how I be. Last week, Kobe couldn't do without me. For real, dog. Now that's B.I.G. Ain't nobody in the world do it bigger than me. That's like a white boy trying to be more 
in me That's like a homeless cat having more figures than me That's like Patrick Ewan having more rings than me That's like rappers having cars drip things than me That's like you saying to yourself you're better than me That's like Kareem saying to himself he's better than me Now stop, think about that, it ain't about that It's about B.I.G. a.k.a. Big Shaq Now that's the difference between first and last play Kobe, tell me how my tastes Okay, Kobe, tell me how my tastes I'm a horse, Kobe ratted me out That's why I'm getting divorced He said Shaq gave a the meal I don't do that, cause my name should kill I love him, but don't leave him I got a bisectomy, now I can't breed him Kobe, you can't do it without me Kobe, you can't do it without me Everybody, Kobe, tell me how my tastes Yeah, you can't do it without me Yeah, you can't do it without me Yeah, you can't do it without me Everybody, Kobe Yeah Thank you Wow <laughs> A lot of stuff in there uh, Shaq says, though, it's nothing malicious. He told our Colleen Dominguez, quote, like the freestyle that I did about Vladi Divac in the 2001 Western Conference Finals. The same as the dance-off against LeBron and Dwight Howard. It was all done in fun. But I am a freestyler. We rhyme all day. Everyone that knows Shaq knows two things about me. One, that I'm a rapper. And two, that I'm a comedian. But I played with Kobe, me, him, Brian Shaw, J.R. Ryder. We had freestyle sessions all the time, all in fun. And we said crazier stuff than that. If I hurt anyone's feelings, I apologize. And it potentially could have hurt a lot of feelings out there. It wasn't just Kobe who went after. He took a shot at Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, of all people. Uh, I don't know. As for the Kobe stuff, what do you make of it? Well, first off, Shaq is a platinum rapper, so I understand. he can say that he's a rapper. However, big fella, come with a better hook. Jabbar, I'm not sure Shaquille O'Neal is a better player than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. El Capitan was pretty good, and by the way, he was good in Bruce Lee movies as well. <laughs> so I think that's a battle Shaq might want to leave alone. But ultimately, it shows that he still has some bitterness and hostility about what happens in L.A. He was quiet after Phoenix got bounced in the first round. Now he has a voice once the Lakers make it to the final and lose. Ultimately, it's good for the league because it's going to promote when these two teams play against one another. But from a sense of rapping... And there was another big. His name was the Notorious Big. So I like to see the big Aristotle come with another nickname as well. Well, personally, I'm waiting for the rebuttal. Because Kobe's an MC, too. I remember seeing him on stage with Tyra Banks rapping. Uh, and he, he could be on Shaq's level. Uh, but, you know, Kobe, get Timberland to hook you up with a beat. You know, come with some lyrics. Patrick Ewing can do the beatbox. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the wheels are still scratching. Because, like you said, he dissed all of these guys. But as Jalen said... It shows that there's still bitterness in Shaq's heart about Kobe. He can deny it all he wants, but when you freestyle, it's coming from the heart. It's coming in from, from inside. You don't, it's not premeditated, so you're not making it politically correct. You're just trying to rhyme, and it's coming from your heart. So to talk about things like the divorce, the $1 million that Kobe said he spent on women, yep. and all of that, that shows that there's still some bitterness there. Some personal, Shaq. personal stuff being dealt with there on stage. And please know, two of the best rappers in the game are Jay-Z and and Lil Wayne. They not the basketball game. They, they freestyle albums. So for it to be a freestyle, that's not an excuse. A freestyle sh still can be classic material. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've said something regrettable during a freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. <laughs> More to come here on our draft special. One of the big movers in the 2008 draft is in studio with us. Joe Alexander from West Virginia. He's got the tie on. Is that your draft tie? That's no. not it, is it? No. no. All right. Well, we'll we'll inquire about that. We'll talk to Joe. Hey, Scott, man. Mm -hmm. We're working on these nicknames. All right. We got a couple. Okay. The Parquet Posse. The Three Basketeers. Mirage et toi. It's French. Or we can go with the, the Three, Three Amigos. amigos. <laughs> what you think? The Boston Three Party. See, right. I like that. See, this man's Big. professional. Hey, Scott, thank you, man. That's what I Let's go work on the other thing. Baby. I'm a couch surfer. 37 cities in 55 weeks. I've got a lot of friends, no itinerary. Without my phone, I'd be out of luck. Most cell companies promise great coverage, 
but T-Mobile proved it to me on their website before I signed up. You can even see your signal strength street by street, or, in my case, couch by couch. When it comes to my coverage, T-Mobile works great. T-Mobile, the highest ranked wireless customer service performance seven times in a row by J.D. Power & Associates. In the morning, it's all about get in, get out, and get going. Men's Rogaine Foam won't get in the way of that plan. It's the first and only foam that's FDA approved to regrow hair. It goes on easily and dries quickly, so it's a breeze to use. Why live life in the slow lane? Men's Rogaine Foam. Use it or lose it. Good cholesterol versus bad, Woody Page. It all rides on the lipoproteins. The higher the HDL, the lower the risk of heart disease. I mean, this is a guy who shed 30 pounds in two months. He tackled his sleep apnea, too. High blood pressure's weak. 150 over 95? Bench the salt. The pass down low? Now that's a clean colon. If only you followed your health the way you follow sports. For a complete list of the tests you need and when you need them, go to ahrq.gov slash real men. Discover the fantastic world of 10,000 B.C. From the director of Independence Day and the day after tomorrow. 10,000 B.C. Buy it today on Blu-ray and DVD. Pick a city, then get a four-star hotel at a two-star price from Hotwire.com. When four-star hotels have unsold rooms, they use Hotwire to fill them. So you get the lowest prices guaranteed. H-O-T-W-I-R-E, Hotwire.com. Fourth center right now, defending champion Venus Williams scraped through a tight first set, tight you know, and then pulled away for a 7-6, 6-1 win over British teenager Naomi Kabati in her bid for a fifth Wimbledon title. Fourth seeded Nikolai Davidenko has been ousted in the first round of Wimbledon. Fifth time in his career that's happened. Davidenko lost 6-4, 6-4, 6-4 to Benjamin Becker Tuesday. And our former colleague, an institution, frankly, the hockey department here, Barry Melrose, was introduced as the new head coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Good for Barry, he will certainly be missed in these parts. At Sports Center right now. What has been 40, count them, 40 years since a West Virginia Mountaineer was taken first in the NBA draft. That drought is about to end. Thanks to Joe Alexander, first team all Big East. Joe came on big in March in particular for the Mountaineers and has worked his way into what most folks think is a lottery pick on Thursday night. And Joe Alexander, as you can see, is here with us live on our Sports Center special. It's been a wild couple of weeks for you, a wild day for you as well. We'll get to what you've already been up to, but when you first declared, you weren't even sure you were sticking around the draft, and now you're looking at a top 10 pick. At what point did you realize that this was a possibility for you? Uh, I think probably midway through my testing the waters experience, um, you know, probably about three weeks in, uh, when people really started uh, shooting me up the charts, that's when I realized that uh, staying in was possible. And, and how do you know that as a player? You're not just reading the internet. I mean, folks are giving you feedback. Is it is it GMs? Is it through your agent? How, how does that work? Well, um, I was working out in Las Vegas with Joe Bunasar, and uh, he knows a lot of people, so he was giving me information uh, from what he was hearing, and uh, just rumors that float around. So. And, and how did you improve your game so much, even from last year to the point where now you're looking at a lottery pick? Well, what do you think you, you improved on most? Well, I just continued to work hard, and uh, but the main difference was uh, Coach Huggins and the rest of the coaching staff and what they brought to West Virginia. It really helped all the players there, and uh, especially me. It's, it's sort of ironic, you know, Coach Huggins wanted you to be more of a post-up guy and learn that part of the game. And really now, looking at the NBA, you're probably looking at being a small forward again right. and playing a little differently. How about that transition? Yeah, it was, it's, it's a little bit strange, um, but I think it, uh, Coach Huggins really did what was best for me because uh, he taught me how to play in the post, but at the same time in practice, uh, he was um, working on my guard skills. So I, I got a little bit of both from him. You know, being in the NBA, playing small forward, you go against all type of guys. You go against guys that like to face the basket and beat you off the dribble. You go against other guys that are going to try to pound you in the post. How do you plan on ha stacking up against that? And what do you feel like your advantage is going to be going against other guys as well? well I think my major advantage, uh, like in college, is, is um, I'm a tough matchup because I'm versatile. Um, I'm a little bit quicker than guys my size, and, uh, and I'm able to guys, guard guys that are bigger than me because I, I have that strength. So um, 
I, th I think that's the main thing is versatility. So. Joe, there's been a lot of talk about you going ace to Milwaukee. Some people say they've even promised that they're going to pick you. First of all, how does that sound to you playing in Milwaukee? And secondly, how do you think you fit into their system with Michael Red, Mo Williams, Yijian, Leon, the guys like that? Yeah, um, well, you know, I would love to go to Milwaukee first off, and uh, I think I would be a good fit for their system uh, with Coach Skiles there. Uh, he, he does a lot of things that are very similar to Coach Huggins and um, you know they've already got a good base there with, with really good players and, and they're really young and, and I think I would just fit in very nicely. Interesting also you have a history that maybe not everyone's aware of your personal history you spent eight years as a kid in Asia you were born over there spent much of your time in China Hong Kong Taiwan and you speak Mandarin which would be handy of course in Milwaukee with, right. with, with E is that something you discussed with them? Uh, yeah that was something they brought up and uh, they were obviously really intrigued by that. You know, with Yi being from China, um, you know, we would be able to converse in Chinese, and, and you know, that's something that's pretty special. That's pretty cool. Now let's talk about your day today, because this is the life of a uh, future NBA lottery pick, I guess. Yeah. This morning, you began in New York, and you got to ring the bell at the New York Stock Exchange. Right, yeah. I mean, not, not many people get to do this. How cool is that? Yeah, it was great. Uh, you know, it's really different than you imagine uh, being up on the on the podium overlooking the the New York Stock Exchange floor. And, uh, you know, like you said, oh, you know, who gets to do that in their life? And, how, how did that come about? Uh, I think uh, my agent set that up for me. So um, you know, I, was, I was just real happy about that I got, you know, to do that. So Agents are good for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what are you most looking forward to, not only on draft night, but in, in terms of the NBA? Uh, I'm just most looking forward to competing. Uh, with guys in the league, um, you know that was one of the major reasons that I decided to leave college. Was you know I, I just had it in my gut that I just really wanted to compete with the best right now. So, well, you've been uh, one of the speaking of stocks, stock way up on Joe Alexander, one of the big movers this pre-draft season. I wonder if you can take us out here with a little Mandarin and tell folks that the ESPN draft coverage starts at seven Eastern on Thursday night. Uh, ESPN is Tuesday I'd love to tell you that was perfect, but I have no idea. That, that's <laughs> awesome because the only Mandarin I know about is the Mandarin Oriental Hotels. So. There you go. I know Mandarin. You said Dude. it just right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Joe, good luck. All right, Appreciate thanks it. A lot, guys. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy this time. This enjoy. Is, this is a great time. Oh, I will. Have fun this week. Right, Joe Alexander from West Virginia, projected as a lottery pick by most folks, maybe number eight to Milwaukee, maybe somewhere else. We'll find out on Thursday night. More of our draft special is on the way. Could it be Rose? Could it be Beasley? Part of a great freshman crop. We'll talk more about those guys in Chad Ford's mock draft coming up. We should come up with a new Mike's Hard Lemonade. Yeah, something for fat guys. Presenting Mike's Hard Light Lemonade. You're a superhero for God's sakes. People should love you. Do I look like I care what people think? Jerk. Call me a jerk. One more time. Jerk. How about you, thickness? Goggles? <laughs> Not okay. Hancock, rated PG-13. It happens to every guy. While you sleep, your skin dehydrates. Prepare to defeat dry skin with new Gillette Dry Skin Hydrator and Body Wash. It combines a deep cleaning body wash with three times the hydrators for a powerful defense against dry skin. You'll step out of the shower feeling like you can take on the world. New Gillette 2-in-1 Dry Skin Hydrator and Body Wash. Unleash the power of your shower. Success doesn't happen overnight. It starts with a vision. It takes planning, confidence, and performance. Little chip shot off the green. He's got it. He's got it. Zach Johnson But above all, it takes the power of commitment. Transamerica, the power of the pyramid. If you're going to eat $5, shouldn't you get more meat? Quiznos Large Deli Favorite Sandwiches are just $5. Try the new Large Five Meat Stack. Five meats, $5. Mmm, Quiznos. Rose dancing all the way to the basket. He lays it in. Quiznos.
Oh, 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 man, did he dunk it? Oh, that's an in throw with a prayer. Beasley taking it to another level. Beasley gets it. Chad Ford's mock draft on ESPN.com is a must read this time of year, and you're up to version 6.0 now. Six but mock drafts. You told me this is the most difficult draft you've ever had to predict. Why is that? Uh, I think there's a, just a lot of fluidity starting at number two. The Heat not necessarily liking Michael Beasley. A lot of shifting on draft boards. You've got a lot of upside guys, and then on the other side, you've got a lot of college veterans, and I think teams are falling out of love with the upside guys, starting to go back and look at some of the college veterans. So I've never seen draft boards shift so much so close to the draft. Then when you add into that all the trade talk that's going on, Memphis is talking trade, New York is talking trade, Seattle is talking trade, no one knows where anybody's going in the draft. The agents are freaking out and they're spinning right and left. Uh, teams are trying to send out disinformation. It's a difficult draft to predict right now. People aren't telling the truth. That's so difficult to believe this time of year. <laughs> Shocking. All right, let's take a look at uh, the way Chad has it at this moment. I think the Beasley thing is particularly interesting because it was assumed, I think, for the most part, that it was going to be Rose Beasley, which is the way you have it right now. Yeah. I, and I, I think Beasley, Beasley will go to. Whether he goes to the Heat or not, I think, is the question. Pat Riley's been making phone calls, trying to see what he can get uh, for the number two pick in the draft. I think that's, that's a really interesting pick there. A lot of teams would like to get up and get it. I think the Heat are making a mistake. I think Michael Beasley is clearly the second best player in this draft. A once in a lifetime type of guy, and I think you take him. The other guy that's really interesting on this is Russell Westbrook moving up the draft right now. Uh, Westbrook, a guy who has what I call the Rajon Rondo factor. He's explosive athletically. He can defend. He gets after it. He flies up and down the court. Um, not necessarily the greatest playmaker, not necessarily the greatest shooter, but he just makes athletic plays, and I think that's what has turned so many teams on him. And if he's what people think he is, a big guard who can defend and play athletically, he'll be in the league a very, very long time. Yeah, and he's a safe pick. Yeah. With that pick. All right, that's uh, the first part of the lottery. The second half of the lottery, 8 through 14, Joe Alexander, who's with us today here, you've got him going to the box. And then, you know, some other interesting guys there, including Mario Chalmers at 12. Yeah, talk about a guy who's rising. Again, somebody who is helped by the NCAA tournament. Chalmers was in the 40s in our top 100 until the tournament. He goes on, obviously hits that huge shot for Kansas that helps them uh, win uh, the national title. Teams start working him out. They start falling in love with his savvy, his three-point shooting. He has a long 6'8 wingspan. And suddenly now, after DJ Augustine gets off the board, you're talking about a guy who I think could be the next point guard taken. He starts at Sacramento, who desperately needs a point guard after they traded away Mike Bibby. The Phoenix Suns at 15 are another team that's looking very closely at Mario Chalmers. They need a backup for Steve Nash, someone they can trust. A guy like Chalmers is considered, at least in this draft, even though he's a junior, a veteran. Yeah, absolutely. And in the absence of crazy upside, yeah. you know, steady and experience, that's a pretty good way to go, particularly with a guard, obviously. Yeah. 15 through 22, Chad, you have like this. Brandon Rush, speaking of experience in Kansas for that matter, you've got him going to the Suns through the Hawks. Yeah, exactly. And again, another experience pick. Um, you notice that some of the, the upside guys are slipping a little bit, and some of the guys who are a little more experienced are, are moving up the charts. Look at Robin Lopez at 17. He's an interesting guy. Two years at Stanford. That's even considered a college veteran anymore, given this draft with so many freshmen in it. People love his hustle, his motor. Um, he's being compared to Anderson Varjao of the Cleveland Cavaliers. He didn't actually put up very good numbers at Stanford last year, but he does hustle. He is big. Um, he does block shots. He is going to rebound for you a little bit. And I think at a, a pick at like 17, where the Raptors have a huge hole in the middle because Andrea Bargnani is not really panned out there, he's, he's a nice fit pick. Again, a safe pick. He won't be an all-star, um, but you know he'll be in the league for the next 10 years. What about Anthony Randolph? He's been falling down through yours and, and other mock drafts. Why is that? Yeah, he, he's a power forward who weighed in at 196 pounds at the pre-draft camp. That's going to scare a lot of teams. He is a freak athlete. 
feet. You can see his freakishly long wingspan there. Uh, a lot to like about Anthony Randolph. Huge upside player, actually. Didn't produce well at LSU. LSU was a terrible team. I think a lot of teams are just worried right now that he's a two to three year project. And teams in the 10 to 15, 16 range, they fancy themselves as playoff teams. They would like a guy who could come in and play a role for them next year. I don't think Anthony Randolph is going to be playing a role on your team for two or three years. That's why he's slipping in the draft right now. Yeah, if you're already deep, you know, projects can be a good way to go. Right. If you think you can play now, then maybe you don't want to wait on a guy for two or three years. Exactly. Let's, let's uh, take a look at the final eight picks of the first round the way you've got them. And it, it gets a little dicier here, yeah, of admittedly, course. in terms of who's going where and, in fact, what teams might be there at that point. I exactly. And you look at a guy like DeAndre Jordan, uh, he was ranked at, in our first mock draft as the 10th pick in the draft. This guy's been all over the place. All over the place because you look at his size and his athletic ability and he reminds you a little bit uh, of a Dwight Howard. And so on that, you want to take him high. Didn't you see him in a workout? He has no basketball skills. He doesn't really know how to play. He did not produce at Texas A&M last year. And you start to say, oh my gosh, this guy's a project. Then when you factor in questions about his work ethic, then you wonder if he really is going to be a guy like an Andrew Bynum who figured it out after a couple of years. He's a guy who's slipping. You saw JaVale McGee slipping a little bit, Dante Green. Some of these upside guys, teams are just not convinced that their upside is ever going to pan out. Is there a version 7.0 coming before there, draft? There, there will be on Thursday, our final mock draft. Probably 7.0, 7.1, 7.2, right up until the draft deadline. All right, Chad Ford from ESPN.com. And of course, he's not limiting himself to the first round in the NBA draft. For the second round, you can check him out on ESPN.com as well. Thursday night's NBA draft, 1 through 60 will be addressed on version 7.0. See where all the projects and potential sleeper picks go in a great draft. Thanks, Jeff. And on the way, the draft isn't the only way to put new players in your team's uniform. We'll get into the who's and where's of the upcoming free agency period when we come back. Excitement of IndyCar racing continues on ESPN. From the historic highs to the thrilling lows that are all part of a new era of IndyCar. The IndyCar 300 of Richmond, Saturday at 8 on ESPN. Legend has it, Rocky Mountain Miners knew how to celebrate with get-togethers called banquets. Their beer? Coors. They called it banquet beer. Brewed with Rocky Mountain water and only the best high country barley for a full-flavored taste. Savored by generations since 1873. Times have changed. Coors never will. Coors, the banquet beer. Thursday night, find the answer. The first pick in the NBA draft, Allen Iverson, Shaquille O'Neal, Tim Duncan. To realize a dream, to change a franchise, to go from the present to the future. Find out who will take the stage and become the face of the next generation. The 2008 NBA draft presented by Sprite. Coverage begins Thursday at 7 on ESPN. Rated E for everyone. Hey, I'm Jeff Gordon, driving the number 24 DuPont Chevrolet, and I'm going to be your mentor in your NASCAR experience. You can basically play this game without having to navigate through menus, utilizing Jeff Gordon as your guide. It's a, truly a game that is easy to get into and very difficult to master. Let's go over to the paint booth and get you set up with a new Sprint Cup ride. The detail of the setups, the paint shop, the graphics, the shop atmosphere, the chase format. The emotion and the authenticity of the actual sport is what you find in our games. I think we really hit a home run on that this year as far as getting people into the game in a way that can be fun right out of the box. It takes passion, competitiveness, heart, desire. It takes motivation, hard work. It takes sacrifice and dedication. It takes love.
And sometimes it takes free agency to build a championship team, which of course uh, starts in July after the draft is over. Basically, there are three layers of free agents out there. You've got restricted free agents, unrestricted free agents, and what we call early termination option guys. Basically, those are the guys you hear about who can opt out of their deal. Let's talk about the restricted free agents from the class of 2004, draft class, I should say. All of these guys, including Josh Smith, the 17th pick in that draft, are now restricted free agents. All have turned down deals from their teams last year in order to get to this area. Vinny Del Negro told us yesterday on our draft schedule that, uh, special excuse me, that he expects Lou Aldang and Ben Gordon back with the Bulls next year. Let's take a look at these guys, though. Chris, what do you expect to happen with them? Well, I think first let's start with Emeka Okafor. He could be on the move, but chances are he'll remain in Charlotte. But he's, he could be in for a big you know, disappointment because last summer, remember, he turned down a $50 million offer. There's no reason for them to give him that much money because nobody's going to throw huge loot at Okafor. Philadelphia may have some interest if it looks like he's not going to go to Charlotte, but I think he'll stay there. Ben Gordon, I think he'll remain in Chicago as well. When you talk about bringing in a Derrick Rose, he's a perfect complement to Rose in my opinion because you're talking about bringing a penetrator there and then a, guy, a great shooter in Ben Gordon. Plus, Rose is big enough to defend the guys that Gordon's not. Ben Gordon is a prolific scorer. I really love this guy's game. Chicago Bulls got to find a way to keep this guy in the fold. Lou Aldang probably will be in Chicago as well. He's definitely a keeper. And he's their best all-around player, a guy that can play any position defensively on the perimeter, and he has a tremendous upside. In Philadelphia, you have Andre Iguodala. No question he's going to return to the Sixers. He didn't play well in the playoffs, but they like this guy. He led him to a strong season. The Sixers cost themselves millions of dollars by not signing this guy preseason. He stepped up and did what he had to do. Now he's earned his money. Did, did, he, did he cost himself in the playoffs? No, not at all. He's no. going to get his money. Okay. The guy I think could move is Josh Smith. You know, Atlanta wants him back, but there are people saying that they aren't willing to go over $11 million per season for him. Philadelphia could start him at $11 million and give him annual increases. So Josh Smith is the most likely of all those guys to be on the move. And I'll tell you what, you put him in Philly with that running gun lineup, it's a nice fit. He's one of the best athletes in the game, not only blocking shots, stealing the ball, and scoring the ball. Big time prospect. All right, those aren't the only, uh, or excuse me, restricted free agents out there. Maybe just the headline guys. There are other folks out there who are going to be able to make themselves money because in some cases they're not the star players on their teams might be able to sneak a better contract out of another team. Some of the interesting names here, Monte Ellis with the Warriors, Jose Calderon, you know how important he is to the Raptors with all those trade rumors about T.J. Ford. You assume they're going to keep him. And J.R. Smith has gotten a lot of interest from places like, reportedly, San Antonio uh, for his services. So who's most likely to go somewhere? Well, J.R. Smith has star potential, but in Denver they're saying they probably won't keep him because they've got enough free spirits, if you will. No, no, no. <laughs> the Denver situation is too combustible for him, and he's a tremendous talent. He can shoot the three with the best of them, can get up with the best of them, a finisher, he plays with heart. He'd be the kind of guy to help take San Antonio back to where they have been the past few seasons. He'd be perfect because they need athleticism. Yep. And, and with that, I mean, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, they keep him in line without question. He would actually learn to be more of a professional there, and that could be the best thing for his career. But that's the maturation of a young player, getting around veterans, getting into a great situation, and growing into your game. Yeah, the upside potential there is huge. Monte Ellis is an interesting case as well for a Warriors team that has Andres Biedrinch to worry about. Baron Davis can opt out. We'll talk more about him in just a moment. But Ellis, you know, arguably the fastest guy in the league, most improved player from a couple of seasons ago. What are the Warriors able to do with him? They'll like him. I mean, they, he'll stay there. And a lot of people, he won't get the huge offers that his numbers would imply because... He's viewed as kind of a system guy. Right. I mean, he's perfect for that running gun stuff they do in Golden State. But if he had to play more half court, slow down, more of a point guard or a two, he might struggle. Styles make fights. This guy can get up and down the court. Monte, <laughs> stay in Golden State. Not all good mo money is good money. Stay there, play in that system, keep getting your numbers, have a good season next year. Did we start fighting at some point? <laughs> The show has taken a turn. All right, some of the other free agents out there this summer, and these guys are unrestricted free agents because Gilbert Arenas has already opted out of his deal. He is unrestricted, as is his teammate Antoine Jameson. And again, questions out there. Who's going to land the big deals and who's going to be... Uh, 
cashing in on unrestricted free agency. The Wizards have a bunch of decisions to make on that front. After another injury-filled season, Arenas and Butler missed a combined 93 games. Antoine Jameson played well in his contract year, 21-10. and 10, But with Arenas available in limited minutes, the Wizards didn't make it out of the first round, losing to the Cavaliers for the third straight year. And again, Arenas has already opted out of his deal, and he has said publicly... He'll wait and see what happens with Antoine Jameson. He wants him taken care of first. So what are the Wiz going to do? They're going to keep both of these guys. There have been reports that they may explore a sign and trade with one of them, but those are false, I've been told. They will bring them back. And, and I talked to them and said, look, if you sign Jameson and Arenas, this is your team. So do you feel like you can compete for a championship with the big three of Karan Butler, Gilbert Arenas, and Antoine Jameson. They said, look, a few years ago when those three guys were healthy, we had the best record in the Eastern Conference. Eddie Jordan, our coach, coached the All-Star game because of that. So when healthy, we think we can compete for a championship, and that's why they'll bring all of these guys back. Coming out of the Eastern Conference has been a revolving door. You saw Detroit do it, the Miami Heat, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Boston Celtics. These guys have three all-star caliber players, and if they keep these guys into the fold, the Washington Wizards can be a team, along with Eddie Jordan, with the way he runs the system, that can make some noise in the Eastern Conference. But they have to find a way to stay healthy. That's going to be the key for their, for their success. It's been a huge problem for them. The Wizards also have the 18th pick in the draft on Thursday night. As I mentioned, Arenas has already opted out, so he's not one of these opt-out guys. Stefan Marbury isn't likely to walk away from nearly $22 million next season. Some of the other guys on this list might, however. Baron Davis and Sean Marion could both make over $17 million. Clippers have some decisions to make as well. Let's handicap these guys' futures, starting with Marion in Miami. Yeah, Marion has decided to stay in Miami because they won't give him you know, the, the extension that he wants. And remember, that's why he was upset with Phoenix because they wouldn't do that. So how happy is he going to be in Miami where you're probably not going to win as many games. So he could be trade bait. There have been talks that Miami could send Marion and the number two pick to the Los Angeles Clippers for Corey Maggette, who we saw is also on this, this list, and the number four pick. And that, that might be something these teams want to explore. You, you also have to look at Elton Brand. Elton Brand probably will not opt out. If he does, it will be a sign that he knows he can get to Miami because that's the only team he's willing to go to and take less money. He would love to be there. They would love to have him. But chances are it's going to be a tough trade to make, so he probably won't opt out and will stay in L.A. In the era of salary cap, there's only a couple of teams with money, Memphis and the Sixers. If I'm those guys... I get the money. I stay inside my contract and try to maneuver other situations. But ultimately, you can't opt out of that kind of money. Of course, free agency begins July 1st, just a week or so after the draft has concluded. GM's job is never done. All right, more to come on our Sports Center draft special. Ever wonder what it's like to be 19 and on the verge of millions? Hmm. You can come visit me you know, wherever I go, but Minnesota will not be here. If you're going to eat $5, shouldn't you get more meat? Quiznos Large Deli Favorite Sandwiches are just $5. Try the new Large Five Meat Stack. Five meats, $5. Mmm, Quiznos. Hey, Mark. The perfect combination of taste and refreshment. We've been expecting. Dear heaven. Only one beer is good enough for beer heaven. Miller Lite, the ultimate light beer. I learned a lot when I found out I had high cholesterol, but I didn't know that it may have led to my erectile dysfunction. That's why my doctor told me about Levitra. Certain medical conditions, including high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol, can decrease blood flow, which may lead to ED. That was news to me. My doctor told me Levitra could help. Levitra works by increasing blood flow to help treat ED. Levitra works for me. Maybe it can work for you. Ask your doctor if you are healthy enough for sexual activity. If you have heart problems or on alpha blocker therapy or have uncontrolled high blood pressure, talk to your doctor before taking Levitra. Do not take Levitra if you take nitrates for chest pains, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. 
Side effects may include headache, flushing, and stuffy or runny nose. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help if you experience an erection lasting longer than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss of vision or hearing, stop taking Levitra and call your doctor right away. Ask your doctor if Levitra is right for you. Pick a city, then get a four-star hotel at a two-star price from Hotwire.com. When four-star hotels have unsold rooms, they use Hotwire to fill them. So you get the lowest prices guaranteed. H-O-T-W-I-R-E, Does size matter? Ah! Oh, yeah. Ah! Jealous? Ah! Tonight. Oh, my God! Ah! The bigger the balls, no, no! the harder the falls. Ah! 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 Wipeout premieres tonight, 8, 7 central on ABC. The fun starts here. So then you guys have the outtakes, right? Competitive and... Competitive... Competent... Competitiveness. I can't say it anymore now. Can I shoot? You got that on camera? See, it's not as easy as it looks, is it? Huh? You know, like every other prospect, Michael Beasley's game and life have been picked apart this spring. In Beasley's case, life has been complicated. The fact he attended six high schools and developed a reputation as either mischievous or immature has raised the only question about his NBA future, the maturity question. And again, as Beasley himself has pointed out, he's only 19 years old. Get a sense of the young man yourself in this all-access look. We've been waiting for this night for the longest time. The lottery is, been, is going to be, I guess, the kickstart of everything. We're here in D.C., you know, watching the lottery, you know, and I wanted to come home, you know, just, just to be with my family, my friends, and I just think it's, it's special, you know, to, to include my family on everything that's going on. the lottery he's not letting on if he is but he's treated like every day DK, what's up, man? <laughs> Not in Minnesota. Why, why are you always going to Minnesota so bad? You in Minnesota right now? How cold, how cold are you? How cold are you? Just tell me. You, you're really cold in the summertime. Clearly, you're not supposed to be this cold. All right, DK, I'm sorry, you know, you can come visit me, you know, wherever I go, but Minnesota will not be here. The top two teams in the draft are Chicago and Miami. And they are both great situations for Michael. He's the best player in college basketball. He's the best player in this draft. He'll be the best NBA player. He should be the first pick. Oh, you gonna get it all. I know who got the top pick, who, you know, who I could possibly go to. And from here on out, it's time to put in overdrive. It'll be a fun week for Michael Beasley, and it's been a fun year. The year he spent at Kansas State as a unanimous first-team All-American. Finalist for the Wooden and Naismith Awards, the Big 12 Player of the Year. Michael Beasley led the nation in rebounding as a freshman with more than 12 per game.
For more on Michael Beasley, go to ESPNTheMag.com. Check out the story with former Beastie Boy Adam Yawk, who's produced a documentary called Gunning for That Number One Spot. Yawk has filed a number of high-rising stars, including Michael Beasley, since 2006 as they prepared for this 08 NBA draft on ESPNTheMag.com. Our Sports Center special continues here. You know, they call him Pooh, but no one is poo pooing Derrick Rose's NBA prospects. Plus, he's a Rose. He can't be bad, right? Yeah, he can't. You got to root for a Rose all of the time. <laughs> the mighty Germans look poised to advance to the championship, but standing in their way is tournament Cinderella Turkey. It's another Turkish miracle! Euro 2008 semifinals action begins Wednesday at 2.30 with Germany Turkey on ESPN. Saturday. The excitement of IndyCar racing continues on ESPN. From the historic highs to the thrilling lows that are all part of a new era of IndyCar. The IndyCar 300 of Richmond, Saturday at 8 on ESPN. Four-star crash rating for Roller. Hello there. <laughs> what if I told you I could get you that Jetta for just $1.98 a month? My little bouffant beauty. <laughs> Don't be shy, it's got ABS brakes and six airbags standard. What do you say to that? I would say sign me up. With the engine roaring and the windows down, that hair of yours would look amazing. Thank you. I think. Get 3D dubs for under $1.99 a month, or get 0% APR on all 2008 models. Legendary Volkswagen value. It's what the people want. Oh, crunch wrap, huh? It's good to go, right? What's in it? Queso dip. Really? Like, like cheesy, spicy, party, queso, queso? Looks delicious. Nah, cool. Now you can get all that cheesy, spicy, beefy queso dip in the new Queso Crunch Wrap. Are you gonna finish that? Only at Taco Bell. 10,000 BC on DVD. BC. Buy it today on Blu-ray and DVD. We should come up with a new Mike's Hard Lemonade. Yeah, something for fat guys. Presenting Mike's Hard Light Lemonade. After the hard work and dedication, it all comes down to this. The NBA Draft. Top consensus players Derek Rose and Michael Beasley highlight a talented field of freshman entries. Anything can happen, but who has what it takes to be number one? The NBA Draft, ESPN, Thursday night at 7 Eastern. A rose is a rose is a rose in a professional sports. Roses have been pretty sweet. Pete Rose, the all-time Major League leader in hits and games played, won three World Series rings, three batting titles, an MVP award. Joe Rose, a tight end for the Dolphins from 1980 through 1985, had 13 career touchdown catches in 83 career games. In the NBA, Malik Rose, all-star human being and a very good NBA player over 12 seasons with three different teams, won two titles with the Spurs in 99 and 2003, playing with the Knicks still. And of course, this guy looks vaguely familiar. Jalen Rose. Beat Jay. Get that, MJ. Get that. <laughs> 14 points per in 13 seasons. Six NBA teams average over 20 points a game in three straight seasons. This guy is not bad either. Derek Rose, nicknamed Pooh by his grandmother because of his obsession with sweets and because he liked Winnie the Pooh. Who didn't? Rose averaged close to 15 points, five assists last season, was second on the team in scoring, led the team in assists. First team All-Conference USA, third team All-American, of course, led the Memphis Tigers to the Final Four and ultimately the championship game and a big part of Memphis' comeback in that championship game as well. And he has played in clutch games throughout his career. As a senior, Rose averaged more than 25 points, nine rebounds and eight assists while leading Simeon Academy to their second straight Illinois Class AA championship, including the game winner. There he's got the trophy as well to prove it. Jalen, as you watched this kid not only at Memphis but uh, in the evaluation since, 
What about his game do you really like for the Bulls or, or some NBA team? To appreciate the beauty of a rose, you must respect the thorn. This is a quiet young man probably when you talk to him, but ultimately his, his game speaks volumes out on the floor. He's explosive. He has a 40-inch vertical, which means he's going to be able to finish when he gets in traffic. He has the ball handling skills, so a lot of pick and roll, rolls in the NBA. I expect him to be very creative and being able to give up good shots to get great shots for other players. Medium range jump shot. His ball handling skills is going to put defenders on their heels. He's going to be able to pull up and knock down that 15-footer. His three-point range will improve. He, he also is a winner. He's a freshman guard that took his team to the national title game. We're not talking about a guy that's going to be a high pick, but his team flamed out. So because of that, I expect this guy to come in, have a big-time impact, and really represent the Rose name and in high regard. You've been waiting all show to use that <laughs> thorn line. You can admit that now. Uh, he's lobbied for the Bulls as a Chicago kid. It makes perfect sense. Basketball-wise, which would be a better fit for him, Miami or Chicago? I think he'd be a better fit in Chicago. E either place, he's going to be good. But Chicago's perfect because they don't have that post presence, but you still want to play inside out. So if you got a point guard who can penetrate the lane and break the defense down and get into the paint, that's essentially playing inside out. San Antonio, you see how Tony Parker does that. Chris Paul does that in New Orleans, even though they don't have a huge post-up player. Tyson Chandler's not that guy you just throw it to on the block. So Derrick Rose will be a great fit there. Plus, Ben Gordon, as I said earlier, a great jump shooter next to him. In Miami, playing with Dwayne Wade, I think you want more of a jump shooter next to Wade because Wade's going to handle the ball a lot as well. All right, Chicago could obviously use him after a 16-point turnaround the wrong way last season. Let's uh, take a look at the Bulls' timeline. They were last in the league in shooting last year. Worst shooting team in the league. On February 21st, they made the big deal to pick up Drew Gooden, Larry Hughes as part of the Ben Wallace trade. May 22nd, the biggest victory of the year for Chicago was on lottery night. Despite a 1.7 chance of winning it, they did so and got that number one pick. Who will be coached? My new head coach, Vinny Del Negro, who we spoke to yesterday. We took it to the streets of Chicago and asked the folks there, Bulls fans, who do you want? The buzz today is regarding the Bulls getting the number one pick. No, they didn't. Uh -huh. I think Beasley from Kansas State is the number one guy to take. Oh, I like Rose. I think Rose has got a little more skill. They should look at Lopez, the Lopez kid from Stanford. The Bulls have the number one draft pick. Did you know that? No. Is it Derrick Rose? Is it going to be Michael Beasley? No-brainer, Derrick Rose. I think if Rose wasn't from Chicago, I would want Beasley. Yeah, Derrick Rose got game. I've seen him since since he was a little boy. I absolutely disagree. We got a bunch of Beasley sitting on the Bulls' rosters right now. The fans will be happier if we win a championship, and Beasley's going to do that a lot quicker than Rose would. Have you ever heard of either one? No. I think there's a lot of Rose love out there, and the, for the people that want Beasley, they think he's the answer on the block. I think having a hometown guy like Derrick Rose would be great. I'd like to see the local kid, Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose. I had to go with the hometown boy. Derrick Rose all the way. Because he's from Chicago, because he's a local kid. I hope they traded him. We want Jordan back. Man, if they don't attain Derrick Rose with that number one pick, it's going to be a problem here in Chicago, bottom line. You gotta like the loyalty, but it's hard to argue with that Jordan plan. Hey. What about the guy that said take Lopez? <laughs> wow. Talk about some of the other great guards in this draft when we come back. Thursday night, find the answer. The first pick in the NBA draft, Allen Iverson, Shaquille O'Neal, Tim Duncan. To realize a dream to change a franchise, to go from the present to the future. Find out who will take the stage and become the face of the next generation. The 2008 NBA Draft, presented by Sprite. Coverage begins Thursday at 7 on ESPN. The phone. Did you know that fish occupy only 1 to 3 percent of most fishable bodies of water? That's a lot of water to cover. And standard lures and bait only attract fish from an area the size of a kiddie pool. You need a better way. Now, you can bring the fish to you. Introducing Magnavate, one of the biggest breakthroughs in recreational fishing in more than 50 years. Magnavate calls fish to you, just like hunters call game. Magnavate uses four dynamic technologies to bring fish to your bait with light, sound, scent, and delight. Electropulse. With Magnavate, the fish come to me. You gotta love that.
For a limited time, we'll include a free pair of compact power binoculars with every Magnavate order. That's a $50 value, absolutely free. Along with your free binoculars, we'll include our advanced performance manual and our 200% more fish, no bull guarantee. What does 200% more fish look like? Order Magnavate and find out. Call now or go to our website. It takes passion, competitiveness, heart, desire. It takes motivation, hard work, determination. It takes sacrifice and dedication. Here's a look at uh, some of the top shooting guard prospects out there. We talked about O.J. Mayo. Eric Gordon is a projected lottery pick as well. Brandon Rush in his experience, championship game, and a title can't hurt his prospects. CDR, Chris Douglas Roberts, also considered a mid-first round pick. Some other guys out there, Courtney Lee, Jamont Gordon, heading for the end of the first round, most likely maybe the beginning of the second. Andy Katz from ESPN.com is back with us now from New York, the site of Thursday night's draft. And let's talk in particular about Eric Gordon. And, and we've had this question with Mayo and, the, and what happened at USC and some other players. How does Eric Gordon's history with Indiana affect his draft status? Well, for whatever it's worth, it has dropped him down a couple of pegs in, you know, in terms of the shooting. Now, I mean, the numbers do back this up. He shot 46% prior to the last eight games of the season. That's when he fractured his wrist, and he played with this fractured wrist. And I just talked to Indiana interim head coach at the time, Dan Dockett, who said that Gordon never complained about that fractured wrist. Now, while he played for Dockett, he shot 7 for 50 on threes, ended up shooting 32% in those last eight games. And when I saw Gordon down in Orlando last month, he said that the wrist really did bother him toward the end of the season. Remember, Eric Gordon was probably projected to be the top player in this freshman class a couple of years ago coming out of high school. But Dockage said, look, this is a guy that's going to be an NBA All-Star that has the kind of competitive juices that Jordan and Kobe had. He threw that out there and thought that Gordon will actually have a bit of a chip on his shoulder that he's going behind guys like O.J. Mayo, Derrick Rose, Michael Beasley, and possibly Kevin Love. Hmm. Yeah, it was interesting to hear Dwayne Wade talk about Chicago because there are rumors with the Bulls, and he points out the Bulls passed on me. Guys remember exactly where they were drafted in the teams that did not pick them. When you look at this crop of two guards out there, who catches your eye? There's always a premium on shooting, so when you talk about playing a two guard in the NBA, you look at guys like Michael Red, who's on the Olympic team, as well as Kobe Bryant and Dwayne Wade. In this year's draft, Eric Gordon, a guy that really tore it up in the Big Ten, shooting from three-point range. Seems like he can get a shot off the dribble. He's going to be very effective. Also, Bayless from Arizona. He's more of a combination guard, but he's really a good shooter. But don't underestimate Chris Douglas Roberts. Yes, we are enamored with Derrick Rose, and he's a tremendous player. But Chris Douglas Roberts was the leader of that team and the first-team All-American. It probably doesn't always look pretty, but ultimately, it's about getting the job done and he's going to be a guy that's probably going to go mid to late first round go to a better team have more of an impact and potentially be playing on a playoff team making a contribution his rookie year well a guy i'm going to talk about is kyle weaver he's not on that list and, and i'm mentioning him with the shooting guards because he's six six but he's really more of a combo guard a lot of teams think he can play the point in the nba from washington state two-time all pack 10 performer doesn't score a ton only averaged 12 points last year but he fills up the box score assist steals rebounds this is a guy who's been working out with brandon rush consistently and a lot of times he's held his own overall but sometimes he's actually outplayed rush a lot of teams i've talked to like him down near the bottom of the first round and remember josh howard bottom of the first round he was a senior uh, they, they got Carl Landry in Houston this year, mm -hmm. came out as a senior, he had an impact. So this could be a guy, not that he'll be as good as Josh Howard, but he's got experience, he's a senior, and he can make an impact in the league. But no being a two guard, too, is more than just what you do offensively. You got to be able to compete defensively, you got to be able to guard a three man in certain positions, in certain situations, as well as a point guard. So it's a premium to get a good two guard, especially one that can knock down shots and make plays. One of the toughest guarding assignments in all the NBA because Absolutely. there's so much skill at that position. Those are the two guards. Let's take a look at the point guards, the top six in the draft projected, four of them in the lottery at this moment, starting, of course, with Derrick Rose. And Andy, the, uh, the real climber of this group has been Russell Westbrook out of UCLA. What has he done over the last few weeks to move up? 
Well, they've done their homework on him, and I just spoke with UCLA head coach Ben Howland, and I asked him, what are the teams asking you about Russell Westbrook and his ability to play the point guard because he didn't do it throughout the course of the season when Darren Collison was healthy. Now, earlier in the season, he did. And in those first six games when Collison was out, he averaged six assists a game. He had a good assist to turnover ratio. And as Howland told me, look, he, he plays the pick and roll very well offensively. And then defensively with his length and his size and his strength, he can be very good in the NBA as a defensive point guard. And that's why there's a lot of interest in Westbrook. And certainly it's a fit. And if we talked about earlier in the show, if that trade were to come off, where New York would get Memphis's pick at number five, and they may take Russell Westbrook. He'd be great in Mike D'Antoni's system and really would play well for him both ends of the court. Westbrook probably will not slide beyond number nine Charlotte if he doesn't get selected by either five uh, at New York if they have that pick or uh, six if New York keeps the pick and then seven for the Clippers. So he's somewhere in that range from five to nine and that's certainly higher than he was projected earlier in the season. It's interesting that uh, such a high a guy on a high-profile program like UCLA that's been to Final Fours moves up after the season. A lot of guys get credit for what they've done in the college season if they play on teams like that, and then maybe fall a little the other way. You like DJ Augustine? Yes, I do, because he has experience. Here's a guy that's played in big-time games, showed he can play with the ball, create and make plays for others. He showed that he can play alongside a big-time player, as he did with Kevin Durant, yet step up as an upperclassman and come back and still lead this team. Maybe it didn't end the way he wanted to in the NCAA tournament, but here's a guy that's going to be an effective point guard in the league. He can play off pick and roll, he splits traps, he knocks down the three-point shot, and I think he has the toughness and the moxie to come in and be productive as a rookie. Well, another guy we're hearing a lot about at that position is Jared Bayless, and teams are divided on him. Some think he's not a point guard, that he's going to play shooting guard. He penetrates off the dribble to score, not to pass. That's why you won't see a team like the Knicks most likely pick Jared Bayless because they want more of a distributor at their position. Other GMs feel like, hey, you know, look at Gilbert Arenas, look at Allen Iverson, guys like that, point guards who do score. So it really depends on your philosophy as a GM what you think about Jared Bayless. Maybe another, uh, like another former Arizona point guard, Jason Terry, who's been a scoring yeah, point, point guard throughout his league. He was the fourth, uh, Bayless was the fourth leading freshman scorer in the country this season. Back to Andy in New York. Uh, let's hear what you've heard over the last hour since we last talked to you about what's going on at the top of the draft. That's right, here at the zone. I was not eating lunch, Matt. I was working the phones <laughs> we know during it. my hiatus and a source very close to Michael Beasley wanted to make sure that we understood that this thing is far from over that Chicago does have a bit of a conundrum because Michael Beasley is the better fit they know he may be the more impact player next season certainly offensively and uh, you know, there were players like Ben Gordon that liked his workout a lot and he could score in the low post but there's a lot of community pressure as we saw in that piece uh, prior to this last segment that there's a lot of pressure to select Derrick Rose they certainly love Derrick Rose they love the position he can deliver for them but that the Beasley thing and the decision is not yet over that they're still mulling this over that's what they're telling Beasley's people that this thing is not dead yet that's from the Beasley camp and obviously they have a uh, more than a passing interest in all of this as to who goes first well what do you guys think I mean it's been projected that the Chicago kid Derrick Rose the point guard would be the guy at number one. The Bulls aren't showing their hand, obviously. They'd, they'd probably have to trade Kirk Heinrich somewhere down the line to make room for him in the rotation. Does it make sense to you to go with Rose, or, or do you believe Beasley? To me, you just said the key. Yes, Rose and Beasley are going to be tremendous players. So to me, you can't go wrong with either guy. But to, uh, to the Bulls, ultimately, it's going to be about who you could get the most for on your roster if you have to move someone. If you take Beasley for your front court, you're going to have to move one of your front court guys, maybe a, even a Drew Gooden or a couple of your young draft picks to try to make up that hole. If you draft Rose, it's going to be Kerr Heinrich or potentially whether you resign Ben Gordon. So ultimately, it's about what they can get for what they already have on their roster. But two tremendous prospects either way you go. This reminds me of what Jay Billis said earlier when a few years ago you had Atlanta pick Marvin Williams ahead of Chris Paul and Darren Williams. And Marvin Williams was a small forward, about the same as Michael Beasley, won the national championship, didn't put up the prolific numbers, but people loved him. And even though he looks like he's going to be a solid NBA player, they would love to have either Chris Paul or Darren Williams in Atlanta now. So Chicago, I don't think they can afford to not take Derrick Rose because if you pass on him when everyone was 
saying take Derrick Rose and he's a Chicago kid, yep. th that'll hurt. Don't discount uh, PR in, in any of this. Exactly. And again, that information is coming from the Beasley camp through Andy Katz, who's now, as far as I can tell, Andy, you're now free to have lunch. <laughs> <laughs> My hiatus is no is back on, right? It's back on. Back on. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Andy Katz, uh, who is neck deep in NBA draft information. Get the uh, rebuttal from the Rose Camp, and we'll, we'll get back to you tomorrow. Uh, the time is drawing close. It's more than 48 hours before we find out who really is the number one pick. We'll wrap up this draft special when we come back. Hard work doesn't have to make your muscles ache because Excedrin Back and Body gives you fast, powerful relief in two ways with a pain reliever and a pain blocker that work almost as hard as you do. Excedrin Back and Body, go. Success doesn't happen overnight. It starts with a vision. It takes planning. Confidence and performance. Little chip shot on the green. He's got it. He's got it. Zach Johnson. But above all, it takes the power of commitment. Transamerica, the power of the pyramid. We should come up with a new Mike's Hard Lemonade. Yeah, something for fat guys. Presenting Mike's Hard Light Lemonade. Six weeks ago, I was just like you, and then I met her. Welcome to the fraternity. It is our mission to take down those who threaten peace. When life gives you a shot, join us. Pull the trigger. Now. What the f*** have you done lately? Wanted Rated R starts Friday. If you're going to eat five dollars, shouldn't you get more meat? Quiznos Large Deli Favorite Sandwiches are just five dollars. Try the new Large Five Meat Stack. Five meats, five dollars. Mmm, Quiznos. Hard work doesn't have to make your muscles ache. Because Excedrin Back and Body gives you fast, powerful relief in two ways. With a pain reliever and a pain blocker that work almost as hard as you do. Excedrin Back and Body. Go. It's just sometimes I feel like I'm wide open downfield and you won't get You're me the ball. You're not always open. Cedric, who has the ball right now? Damien has the ball. Damien has the ball. Go ahead. Well, all I'm saying is just look downfield more often. See, this is good. Saturday, the excitement of IndyCar racing continues on ESPN. From the historic highs to the thrilling lows that are all part of a new era of IndyCar. The IndyCar 300 at Richmond, Saturday at 8 on ESPN. Our poll question is ongoing. Who should the Bulls take with the number one pick in the NBA draft? We've got a little bit of a switch here. Yesterday it was 51% for Beasley. Today, 54% of you think Derrick Rose is the guy. And not surprisingly, Rose is carrying the state of Illinois, where opinion really does matter as far as the Bulls go. Hmm, interesting. We'll keep up with that uh, tomorrow on our Next, Sports Center NBA Draft Special, 1.30 Eastern Time. You wanted to make a, a quick correction. Yeah, I misspoke earlier. I mentioned that the, the Miami Heat were looking at trading Sean Marion and the number two pick to the L.A. Clippers for Elton Brand and the number four pick. It, it, it or for Corey Maggette, it actually would be Marion for Elton Brand and the number four pick. Maggette could be traded because yep. Phoenix is trying to get him for Leandro Barbosa and the 15th pick. And so everybody's after Elton Brand. And yeah. to all of the young men that's going to walk across the stage and get drafted and or shake David Stern's hand, you go from being a young man to a grown man, a professional. Handle yourself that way on and off the floor. But more importantly, enjoy your NBA experience because you're living a dream. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon again, 1.30 Eastern Time. See you, everyone. I'm Scott Reese. Here's what's happening on SportsCenter right now. Six months after returning to the airwaves, Don Imus is involved in another controversy, this one stemming from racially charged remarks made on Monday about Cowboys cornerback Adam Jones. Jones telling the Dallas Morning News, quote, I'm truly upset about the comments. Obviously, Mr. Imus has problems with African Americans. I'm upset, and I hope the station he works for handles it accordingly. I will pray for him. 
Imus apologized today, saying the remarks were intended to make a sarcastic point. What people should be outraged about is that they arrest blacks for no reason. And I mean, then there's no reason to arrest this kid six times. I mean, maybe he did something once, but I mean, everybody does something once. WABC and Citadel Broadcasting Corp. say it's unlikely the broadcasters would take any disciplinary action against Imus. Sports Center tonight, 6 Eastern, Hall of Famer Terry Bradshaw's stunning steroid admission. Best of Mike and Mike, up next. Uh Just a disastrously bad start. I like what he does on the field. Like that makes me stop and go, yeah! Hey, Golic. Yes, Greeny. You know, life is about making choices. Ginger or Marianne, Coke or Pepsi, and now Derek Rose or Michael Beasley. Who will the Bulls take with the first overall pick in the NBA draft? Speaking of choices, we'll tell you who USA Basketball has chosen for this year's Olympic team. Will the country that invented the sport win international gold for the first time in eight years? Should baseball writers be the ones to choose who goes into the Hall of Fame? Kurt Schiller doesn't necessarily think so. We'll ask one of those who have the responsibility, our own Jason Starr. And Shaquille O'Neal chooses a New York City nightclub to make a statement about Kobe Bryant. We'll give you the sanitized version of the latest Shaq rap. This is the best of Mike and Mike starting right now. Shaq is a superstar and Kobe Bryant is a superstar and on the same day that Kobe Bryant was named to the Olympic team for the very first time this video surfaces that someone videotaped Shaq who got on the mic and was freestyling in a club in New York on Sunday night and and he you know it, it basically it was a, a lengthy diss on Kobe Bryant right. he went a bunch of other directions too he sort of took a swing at Patrick Ewing he took a swing at Kareem Abdul-Jabbar yeah. you know I, I do think he was kidding around now, whether it will be taken that way or not, I don't know. I'm not intimately familiar with the etiquette of freestyling. Uh, the, again, the I one thing about the wife, I think...